we told Don, and then if, uh, we knew that they were closing in on us. And uh, just to see enemy soldiers stand there smiling. And they were so tall, they could have been Chinese, but we didn't have time to ask sure. what their dialogue was. Sure. The communist doctrine is we will fight when we want to. Mm. You know, so in this case, they weren't going to fight us on our terms. They want to fight us on their terms. So that's why we headed to high ground. I told Don and he headed us up a hill and we got to the top of a small knoll that was still a lot of triple canopy on, on two, two and a half of the sides. We had a little opening on the right um, that w went steeply down the hill. And uh, we didn't realize there was another little area in the back that we never were attacked from, but from the right side, all the way across the front and to the left, uh, around two o'clock, they hit us. Gunfight was on. And, and again, Sal sensed the enemy approaching us and they, when it, and then he and Hep opened fire on them before they opened fire on us to get, so we maintained the fire superiority over the enemy at all times. Wow. Well, that, you know, over time, they would come at us. We blow them back in the jungle. They kept coming. And I forget how long we've been on the ground. Sure. Probably at that point, had to be at least two hours or so, probably. Yeah. And um, then when Don pointed that out, because what they wanted, the NVA figured if they had enough dead bodies, they could get higher. And they wanted to get it so they could shoot down at us and get a tactical advantage. Because right now, sure, every time they came out of the jungle, we blow them back. Then Spider came back because we always had other teams on the ground. Sure. So Spider was busy attending to the other team. And then he came over, made contact with me. We had to confirm our location on the ground in the middle of the firefights to let him know where we were so that when he got TAC air there, we could do the tactical attack air support on the ground Man. he told us what assets we had and then we would direct him at, on the the sides that we had the most severe attacks from oh, and uh, we had gun runs then the napalm then that was the first time that i ever smelled human flesh burning yeah I bet. napalm runs oh my gosh yeah oh my they gosh. were serious and they and then the other thing is by 68 the nva had developed a technique called getting close to the belt would be our bell because they knew from that experience from hearing a ones or from the helicopter gunships that when they heard them coming they had to get close to our bell the closer they were to us the less chance they have of getting killed by the air assets so right. we called in an airstrike they'd hear it coming they'd rush us we push them back in the jungle that went on we directed airstrikes for i think close to two hours oh man so you because fight we them. had fast movers that came in with gun runs and bombs, A1 Sky Raiders. We had a cluster bomb unit run, napalm, and several gun runs. And then the gunships showed up from Scarface. And then we had the helicopter gunships that were the judge and the executioner who came out with gun runs, rocket, the 2.75 rockets. And then they returned to base. And then finally, when the King Bee came out, Captain Tin, uh, Captain Tin came out and uh, Spider found a spot where the elephant grass was only 10 to 12 feet tall. And he brought the, they told the king bee to go in and hover. And it was only maybe 10 yards, 12 yards away from us. Sure. But because the elephant grass was so thick and the enemy contact was still there, between the enemy contact trying to get through the gas to get to the helicopter. Yeah. Um, it took us 10 minutes. He hovered there for close to 10 minutes. I bet that was excruciating. It was. And then when you get to the uh, to the King Bee, uh, the gunships, the judge and executioner came back and they made gun runs right deadly close to our perimeter. Oh, my God. Which kept, kept the enemy back while we threw the guys on the helicopter. And Don Wolken at the time, we were about 220, 230. He's the team dude. He goes, Okay, you got to get on a helicopter. I just grabbed him by his shirt, picked him up, <laughs> and threw him in the helicopter. Oh, 
And then I jumped up on the straddle and he grabbed me and pulled me into the chopper. Yeah.